Hi, welcome to this global strategy and leadership knowledge clip about Dublin's 10 types of innovation, also known as Dublin's 10 areas of business innovation. This was created by Larry Keeley, who with Jay Doblin came up after a lot of research about these different categories that they could break up in uh, the processes of how an organisation has gone about its innovation, how it could be different from other organisations. So you can see here the categories range from something like profit model, which to us normally is fairly simple. I have a product, I give it to you, you give me some money, exchange has occurred, the trade has, has happened and, and off we go. The idea of what the network is, structure, process, product performance, customer service, channel, brand and customer engagement. Easiest way to always have a look at these is to apply it to a practical example. So I'm going to have a look at FlexiCar. Fairly simple business model, frame of a car without the cost and hassles of owning one. This comes under, I guess, this disruption that's occurring called access over ownership, similar to the Airbnb model. Accessing a property over having to buy a holiday house. It's got to be easy to use. They have to get customers in, they have to keep customers. So things like loyalty programs, discounts, special offers are going to be important. The, the point, the very basic proposition of FlexiCar is you want to rent a car, but you're not coming in for a holiday. You only want it for four hours. You don't want to drive the whole way to the airport to pick up a car from a traditional rental company like Hertz or Europe car. You want a different offering and you don't potentially you want to own a car yourself if you can continue to get this service easily. So we can apply it to these categories. We don't know all of the information, right? but we can take some educated guesses. And we can also, for me, say, well, here's some dotted lines where it's not as strong to me about how much value this particular category of innovation will have provided for the overall value of FlexiCar. But if we think about the profit model, it is different. The profit model is not, here's your Europe car that you pay $50 a day for, and it comes out a little bit if you hire it for a week. This is, here's your flexi car that you only want for three hours to get the kids somewhere and do some shopping and pick them up again and return it to the same spot, okay? Here's something where you want to take this car four times a week, whereas it's only when you go to Europe that you need to pick up a Hertz car um, to use for two weeks while you travel across, across Europe. They're very different ways of making model this uh, sorry ways of making money this is about getting the money in smaller amounts with lots of customers the network part of this in a sense is the fact that flexicar is everywhere what i mean by that is i don't have to go to a major tourist hub or depot to pick up a rental car these are spread out throughout the suburbs all right so i can look at my phone using technology just like uber and see where a flexi car is that i'm able to access quite quickly it could be a kilometer only from my house the structure of the business we don't know but i think we can assume here it doesn't have to be the same structure as a traditional rental car company we don't have to have as many a uh, customer facing staff we don't have to have little offices in the airport of the main train stations so that's quite different the process, again, this is about smooth step, put in your credit card details, put in your personal details so that next time you can hit a button, I want a flexi car from 12 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Um, at this point, pick up, book, walk, get the keys, done, and off you go. That is a different and a smoother process that they must deliver in order to differentiate from traditional rental companies. The product performance, I did a dotted line because it's a rental car, it needs to get me from A to B. Product system, again, it's about bringing you in, but it's it, in this sense, the product system is more about the fact that it's online, it's an application that I can use, I get the car, return the car, there's no hassles. The same thing, service, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of service if everything runs smoothly, but you want the service there. Of course, it's a rental car, so you have the same issues as any company like accidents, damage, things, uh, traffic infringements, things that have to be dealt with. The channel and the brand, we think about with FlexiCar was starting, you might know the name now if you live in Australia. It's become um, a lot 
larger. But at the start, especially, the brand is not going to be adding a huge amount of value until it becomes established. The channel, it's kind of online. But this one's also really important, customer engagement, because once you've got people with FlexiCar, you need to keep them not away from Europe car, away from purchasing their own car. That's where you've got to keep them. So it's a different, you see, it's a different relationship you're trying to have with your customer. They're trying to convince you and I, you don't need to own a car. That's very different to, oh, well, if you get our, our Hertz car, you can have the latest um, BMW from the airport and a special discount. That's a different sort of offering. All right, so there's an example of, of one company. If that doesn't work so well, apply products that you love. Think of something that you found quite successful that you also really like and think about how they might have used these 10 types of innovation. Also, just to summarise, it's interesting, and one of the reasons that Doblin came out with this uh, theory, I guess, this framework, is that research showed that where we expect value to come from, and this is 10 years of value from products, is in the product performance. It is in that product doing something faster or better or lasting a bit longer than the version before. The reality is lots of the value doesn't come from that where we expect it. It comes from things like the business model. The value from Airbnb comes from the access over ownership business model. The value from Airbnb comes from the networking. It's my house that I'm going to put on the market to rent to a stranger. The process comes from the ability for me to, with, a, with an Airbnb app, look through it, see where all of these properties are, be able to filter quickly, be able to hit with one button because it has all my details to make that pre-booking, to be able to pay full for now or half and then half later. All of that process is very different to ringing around hotels, right? The core processes are, are critical for an Airbnb and are now quite complex, but they're quite different to traditional way of getting accommodation. Right? So you can see here, this is where the value is added more so than here. Yes, brand can still be important. Customer experience is still very important. But what, what was interesting to me especially is that where we have always thought product improvement and product innovation has been the driver of overall value for the organisation, it's not necessarily just in the product itself. It's in the things that encompass and wrap around the product and make the, uh, the whole thing the experience for the customer. All right, so hopefully that's given you quick oversight into Doblin's 10 types of innovation. It's in the study guide and you can go now and do an example on Zara. Bye for now.